Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and I will say before we get into this review, um, some of the reviews for Horror Fast will leak into November. Uh, just letting you know ahead of time, but uh, we will still get them out before the year's over. Is November after October? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. This is another night of October Horror Fest. Um, well, we're watching four movies in one night. What? No. So we had, uh, I guess you can call this Horror Comedy Night Part 2. I think this was a serious horror movie night. Um, the second one is more comedy that we'll be watching, but the first one is not. We watched uh we watched the um we watched the Terrifier today. It's pretty terrifying, huh? This is not our first rodeo with this film. We we're kinda hoping for a crowd. We didn't get one. Anyways, um would you like to give off your thoughts as I grab my notes real quick? Yes. I will give my review. I have the numbers this time. So Mike's going to be covering the numbers. Um, uh, before I get to my review, I want to explain my rating system. Just in, that I go off a standardized system whenever I rate movies. Right Again? Times. Again. But this is a actual breakdown. Usually I just say some of it. So, best movies I've ever seen is a 10. That means it's perfect. Number one is the worst movie of all time. Examples of this is The Blair Witch Project. Worst movie of all time. My example of a perfect 10 would be Hill House. Um, perfect film. I couldn't think TV series, but I couldn't think of a perfect movie that I've rated. Anyway, so it goes from, from 1 to 10 in the following. Worst of all time, awful, bad, kind of bad, okay, good, pretty good, great, really great, and perfect. So the reason I'm explaining this is because this film is a weird one for me. This film did not have a high budget, but it wasn't a B-movie horror. It didn't have in-depth story but it was creepy it was really unsettling the cinematography was really good especially what they had acting wasn't fantastic but it didn't need to be it, other than from art the clown art the clown had amazing acting he used to be a mime the a actual guy who played him used to be a mime so he was able to kind of perform well he does little things and he's cute but evil and murderer and you're kind of rooting for him for a little bit but then you're like wow this guy's a real asshole um, everything about him is creepy and m makes me uncomfortable every time I watch this film. And the things he does. I'm not going to get incredibly in depth because I've watched this film three times and I want it to be over. This film makes me uncomfortable and I don't want to watch it anymore because it makes me so uncomfortable. And I think that that means that it did its job really well. There's not a lot of movies that I say I don't want to watch that because it's fun. Like Murder Party would probably be another one that's like this kind of style. That it's not bad. It's not expensive. But it's gory and they don't care about fucking with people. And they don't need a lot of money to, to do that. that. This movie is, this to me is better than a lot of movies that spend millions and millions of dollars on things to try to scare people. Like Annabelle. For me this film lands between a pretty good and a great it's definitely at least pretty good. I don't know if it's good enough to be great. So I'm probably going to put it about 7.6 on that scale. Um, it's solid and makes me not want to watch it, which is even better. We've kind of swapped roles for this because I kind of give the short and sweet review, and then you give all the, the st eh, statistics and like the in-depth stuff. And this time it's the other way around. Um, so, of course, this time around I have the uh, – Ratings and money scores for this film. Uh, critics give this film, based off Rotten Tomatoes, a 6.0 out of 10. And the audience gives it a 5.4 out of 10. So, after seeing it a few times, I could see why it kind of lands in the middle. Because it's either you like this movie or you don't. <laughs> um, budget, at first I thought it was $100,000. But upon further ins inspection, it's actually $800,000. You did. But there's no box office. I can tell you why. This is a grindhouse horror. 
Grindhouse horror movies do not go into theaters because they are strictly unrated or They're too good not theaters. not safe for theatrical releases. The only things I like about this movie is literally the, the practical effects, like the makeup and everything, because that actually is pretty decent for what it is, and the clown. That's the I, for me those are the only two carrying elements of this film that make it what it is. For me, it's. I've seen a lot of horror movies within the last few years. Probably too many to count. Probably too many more than once. This film, I mean, it's it's unsettling. It's uncomfortable to watch. I don't want to watch it again. For obvious reasons. For scene number one, we can't show it on YouTube because, you know, we would get removed completely. The uh, circumcision, I would say. And uh, the other scene that I actually enjoy in this film, because there's two films that this move, this two scenes this movie is known for, the circumcision, and Joyful Ride on a Trike. Long story short, this this seems like one of those movies that you're like trying to find a quick, like, cheap movie to find at like Walmart, your local movie store, and it's in one of those nine box, uh, dead end horror uh, movie sets that are like, oh yes. House of Terror, or Zombies on Plane for a Drive, or some dead-end dumb name like that. I'm very indifferent with this movie, okay? Very indifferent. I cannot agree with your rating, though, because I don't think this film is above a 7. I would say this film would have to be... It's scary, it's uncomfortable. It's a good, scary movie to show somebody... One time, not three times. I may have to agree with the playing field and say just six and a half. I mean, I know that that's kind of disappointing for you to hear. Well, that means that you're... And your score is... You're, in my score, you would put it at you're, you're, fairly good. Yes, in my score, that's that's still passing, but I'm like, it... It's not... what fairly good means. It's, it's yeah. passing. Basically what I'm saying is it's not really like my kind of horror because I don't really go out of my way to look at like grindhouse horror because this is strictly grindhouse, low budget, low everything horror. And there's a lot of those out there that are like, okay, this is over the top. This one is on the higher scale of And some say it's harder it. to make these films than the big AAA title film. Because it's, you, don't, you can't get that many people to do this, this many uncomfortable shit. That's why I'm saying this one is on the higher higher end of the of the scale. It's it's What's if the, if they movie we watched recently that you said that you think that would have been bad. What was it? What was it? Talking about like uh Rage. To, um, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had PTSD for a moment. What does Johnson and Johnson say? Okay, that's what he said. A lot of my points I want to talk about is in group discussion, but a lot of them I just don't want to talk about because it's... I can answer the question myself. <laughs> so, I, this is not a movie that you have to think a lot about, either. It's a movie that, that you don't want to think about, either. This guy's killing people. Um, He's an immortal god. So, okay, my first gripe is the opening scene, and I know that it's set in the future and this rest of this film is set in the past but it's like I mean does she kill her because of being bullied because of mental mentally snapped or just to show the movie viewers that hey this is what you're getting yourself into fuck you there is a little tidbit of foreshadowing in the opening scene that they did not that, that's really hard to catch but if you really pay attention you can see it in the background of the interview, after the beginning, as it's painting away, it, sa it says, um, the end is, the beginning is just the end, or something like the, that. The, in the, begin the, the beginning of the end is near, or something like that. Yes. The, be so the, the beginning is here, or something like that. The opening scene is the end, is what they're saying. So, on a phone call with your sister, doing some homework, at a party she's trying to stay away from people upstairs all of a sudden barge is in the room oh sorry i didn't know you were here 
continues to precede the initiation of sex. Um, there was a couple goofs that they, they had in this <laughs> film. Um, one of them, uh, I don't remember the exact scene, but but there was one where she was on her phone and she said, I'm going to call somebody now. I have a call. And, and if you look in the reflection of the window, um, it shows her lock screen. She never, the actor, the actress never unlocked her phone. Another thing that was more coincidence is at one time they were sitting in a car and an ambulance drove by. Yeah, that, that was an actual ambulance uh, running by. That wasn't yep. in the movie. And it was going in the direction of the pizza place too it actually worked out yep. that's what they said so pure coincidence oh, yeah. or goof yeah. you got a free ambulance ride is all i'm saying this one scene here i really i really am just kind of like they had to stretch it out that long um the dude shoots her three times he shoots her in the head she survives because he, he runs out of cheek. bullets he still shoots her in the head runs out of bullets so he's like I have to go get bullets. So he walks all the way back to his torture chamber just to get more bullets, texts the sister to come inside through the back door, waltz back, like, oop a doo 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 and then he's just like, fine, boom, and then unloads the rest of the clip into it, and I'm just like, that whole scene was like 15 minutes by itself. Um, I also, for a little bit, thought that she was the one that survived until the end, and I was like, how the fuck did she survive with yeah, seven that, shots to the that, face? The first time watching it, though, like, when she, when the... Tara, I think that's her name. Yeah, it, yeah it, that Tara is killed halfway through the movie. Um, it's like, oh, well, what are they gonna do now? And then they just bring the sister into the film, so it's like, uh, okay. They did so much character building for Tara, and then all of a sudden, fuck this idea, I guess. <laughs> The reason I didn't vote that took a lot of points away from me is the, the people – the clown is fantastic in this movie, and everything he does is fantastic. Yes. Um, everything else about this movie is not good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -mm. He makes it the seven and a half. Him and some of the practical effects. Cause Him and what he does for – the, For the low budget this film is, some of the practical effects, some of it is actually not Him that bad. and what he does, which includes the effects from him killing people, is good. Yeah. All of the, the dialogue, people, the dialogue, the characters, the logic, the stupidity of these people. That's what ruins the movie for me. The only last thing I have to really say is the fact that is is art the clown human? Is he supernatural? Is he extraterrestrial? Um apparently we're getting a sequel, so he's a spin off character from a He's a spinoff character from an anthology movie thing that became really big because how how he looked and everything. So they made a film for himself. This film did good enough money for what it did. We're getting a three-hour sequel. Yes. So we're getting a sequel. And hopefully they kind of... I want to know more about the clown and what makes him tick. That's about it. What I want you to do now is just remain calm and stay on the line with... Um, anyways, I'm done talking about this movie, and I hope I never get to see this movie again for a very long time. Uh, we're going to be moving on to a film that I haven't seen in a very long time. I still remember either it was you or it was somebody else that hated this movie. Hated this movie. Because I remember it was, it was a friend, it was our, it was our friend Def Muffin that showed us the movie. I mean, it might have been me that hated it. Yeah, because it was back in college. Anyways. We'll see. As he's off camera... We're going to be watching Black Sheep. Well, hello everyone. This is Mike Check 95, my cohort, Krieger Margin 1. He's currently residing on the thinking couch right now. He wanted me to go first along with Jefferson wait so um yeah black sheep um not really much thought process to put into this movie bunch of science bullshit essentially your typical zombie film but instead of zombies it's sheep um this is uh my equivalent to thanksgiving on the uh bullshit scale it gets a 10 out of 10 because this film 
is the greatest piece of art known to men. But to be critical, this is not a good horror movie at all. <laughs> this is a god-awful horror movie. But I love it for that reason. Therefore, this film, for me, for October Horror Fest, because if you really think about it, what if you were attacked by a massive army of sheep burning down the hill and you had nowhere to go? It gets you five from me. Five out of ten. If only you could see his face. And now, the floor is yours. As he breaks a fucking cup. You know why I break a fucking cup? Because if you spell cup, it spells C-U-P, and it looks like somebody peed all over this fucking movie. I'm going to have this review take longer than 30 seconds, unlike Michael's review. So, I'm going to go over the financials for this first. First of all, this film is called Black Sheep. I don't think Michael said that. I did. So, Black Sheep is about a film about genetically altered sheep for that were altered for profit for some reason. I don't understand what the profit was supposed to be. But anyways, and they start killing people and infecting them like zombies, even though their genetics have been changed by genetic waste. It doesn't make sense. I wish Josh was here, because Science Time with Josh would tell you that this doesn't make any fucking sense. According to the, the ratings of Rotten Tomatoes, critics put this at a 7.2. <laughs> And the audience put this at a 5.3. Their budget was $5 million. Their box office globally was $5 million. So just like as I have done tonight, they wasted their time making this movie because they didn't make any money. They didn't lose anything. They just wasted their life. Just like I wasted my life watching this film. Um... I'm going to talk about the things I liked about this film, and then I'm going to talk about the things that I don't like about this film. Here we go. Number one, things I liked. I liked seven things about this film. The first thing was the shotgun from behind scene at the beginning of the film. That was a good little har har ha ha. I think she said something. I enjoyed that. I wrote this down as a positive. I don't know. I don't, whatever. What, what's the dude's name who turned into a sheep the first one? Grant. Grant. Whatever Grant bit the the rabbit i thought of smeagol immediately um there's a lot of things that in this film that made me think of lord of the rings because this was filmed in the same country as lord of the rings and around the same time period of lord of the rings this was actually filmed like a year afterwards the other thing that made me think of it is i like to think of this a nice quote from um gandalf the gray on your darkest day on the fifth day at sunrise look to the east and you'll see, and you'll see, and you'll see me. Which that's where Gandalf the Grey, or Gandalf, Gandalf the White at this time, um, descended down the mountain with an, an army of people, along with the light, and it looked like a bunch of white. That's what made me think of it when he looked over the hill, and to the east, there was millions of sheep running down the mountain. The sheep in the car, <laughs> driving the car off the cliff. That I like that. There's no legitimate way that a sheep could ever do that. He doesn't have opposable thumbs, and his legs aren't long enough to get the gas. But I'm going to ignore that. The sheep spear out of nowhere. <laughs> and then the last thing I liked about the movie, and this is the last thing in the movie that I enjoyed, was when the grandma threw the, the shell to the dude. The way she threw it was very funny. It was like... <laughs> My cons are 12th cons i had just enough room to write 12 i wasn't gonna go try and go crazy on this first of all the opening rhyme that he, the dude was saying and apparently he went to go see a therapist once he grew up he was fine um i found that really cringy and i thought he was actually gonna be a bad guy also he was wearing a, a leg brace as if he had polio or something when he was younger and they never explained that or touched upon that at all which made me really upset the second thing this thing actually really made me angry Upon the entering of the, the farm at the beginning of the movie, uh, it showed a plane land on this hilly land. Michael and or audience at home, do you know how, how much feet it takes to land and take off on a straight, flat runway? I'll tell you because I Googled it. Uh, just enough. 
So, in a personal plane like that, that's just a two-seater, to take off, you need 3,110 feet of land. And to land, you need 2,380 feet. I don't know about you, but I didn't see 2,080 feet of flat land because it's all hills up there. Highly genetic, the, the goo that makes them, that made the first one, highly genetic. I don't even know what the fuck I wrote after that, but hi, that shit's stupid bullshit. The baby sheep looked awful. That stupid bitch with the aura and, and your chakras that's doing some Naruto bullshit over here and Sharingan having asses, that was stupid. When the brother got bit and the chick went to go check out the wound, I guess she's a scientist, but even the dude didn't even bother cleaning it out, and it was pussy very instantly, and he was just like, ah, I'll be okay, I'm just not going to do anything about it. And, and then the scene, it was really cringy when she went to go take a sample, a little swab of it. She didn't just swab. She fucking went in, dug in, and then went out. And it was like, that scene, that made me uncomfortable. Sheep fucker, and I'm not going to say anything more on that. Speaking of which, I'll say this. This was my final thing I didn't like, but I have things in between here. But since we're talking about penis fucker, the fucking penis stretcher 9000 bullshit. <laughs> When the science bitch was out running in her all-white clothes and her high heels in the woods for some reason. But she didn't need to leave. She didn't have to. She could have stayed, stayed like she was supposed to. It appeared that the mud turned into quicksand <laughs> and lapsed onto her where she couldn't move. Angus overall is a character. I hated him. He didn't make sense. Now, this is my biggest gripe about this movie. The brother genetically altered all of these to make a profit. What the fuck was the profit that he was going to make money off of? Organic farming. Or, no. No. Organic farming. What does that even mean? I don't know. Mike doesn't know. Nobody knows. You know why? Because this movie's bullshit. Random facts that I'm going to talk about, and I have one quote. And then I'll end it with my rating, which I'm sure is going to be fantastic. There were sheep in this movie that were trained, and there were uh, some animatronics that were used in this movie. Obviously, the baby sheep was an animatronic. That wasn't a real sheep. Um, the total number of sheep, and this was revealed by the director that were used in this film, is 852 sheep. There was a Wilhelm scream in this, which is the only reason it got any kind of points other than a one. <laughs> There is a scene where a guy got his leg bitten off by a um, by a sheep, and he was crawling away. It was towards the end of the movie. That man was actually an amputee, and he volunteered for that scene. <laughs> he actually didn't have a leg. They didn't do some kind of fancy, you know, pant leg with it's behind your leg. Nope, he just, it was a stump. So he was like, I'll be perfect for this scene. Not as beautiful as my favorite quote from this movie that kind of defines the... The, the thinking behind this movie, the storytelling, and just how compelling of a art that this film is. Tucker says, what about the sheep? Angus responds, fuck the sheep. Tucker responds again, no time for that, bro. We gotta go. And that's what I want to do right now. I want to go. I'm giving this rating of a 3.5. It is 3.5 because it is... Somewhere between bad and kind of bad, leaning kind of towards more of the bad, but either way, it's bad. I think uh, Larry has something he wants to say. If I ever become a genetic experiment for organic farming, I will kill everyone. Black sheep. All right, this is crazy remarks. Like I said, thanks killing and me is you and black sheep. So are we even now? We've watched our favorite horror comedy films that we hate. Are we even? Are we even? Do you hate sheep? Do you like turkeys? This has been another... Mike Check Productions of October Horror Fest. The next time you shall see us, it'll either be whichever Amityville horror film we decide to pick because there's so many. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. The 2006 one. That's, is, 
the 2006 one. I don't remember clarifying. Why do you think it's called The Beginning? Well, it wasn't the first one. Anyways, we are going to head out because I think um, Krieger's done. Just look at that face. Always ask the questions, why not? And who with? And why not, man? It's fucking cheap. Why have zombies or a killer, uh, undead, 100 year old sacred turkey when you can just have an army of sheep, genetically mutated and organic sheep? We hope you enjoyed. Yeah!